Hey everyone, come on in. Retro Gamer Girl here and welcome to the 2019 Games Room Tour. I wanted to start with answering a few questions that were asked often on Instagram and YouTube. Now firstly, we have collected for quite a long time. We've been together for 13 plus years and we've been collecting that whole time and we also have still held on to our childhood games and consoles. Uh, the second question we're asked a lot is how big is the room and this room is 513 square feet roughly. And in here we have thousands of games and hundreds of consoles and handhelds. Uh, the other question is what is our electricity bill? And that is really, really super difficult to gauge. Uh, we don't always have everything on in here. Uh, we do when we are shooting a tour like this or when we have our, one of our birthdays we celebrate in here. And uh, when we have friends and family over for games night, we definitely have everything on. Um, but what you're going to see in this tour, uh, you are going to see all of the changes that we've made and I'll explain why we've made those changes. A few people have also asked on what is the shelving we use and the seating and the best use of space. So I'm going to go through all of that with you. Uh, we've also been asked some of our favorite pieces, our kooky pieces, uh, the stories behind those items. Uh, we'll go through all of that and uh, I just want you guys to sit back, relax, have a cuppa, enjoy 2019's Game Room Tour, and uh, let me know what you think at the end. All right, everyone, so I am up against the front door of the room, and this is the overall view when you come through those big doors of the games room. And one of the things we're often asked is the shelving. So as we go through the room, I'm definitely going to touch on where we got them from. But the main ones down the center of the room are actually from a network video store that closed down. Uh, the guy was selling them for $20 a rack. And of course, we love our film. And half of the reason the way the room is set out the way it is is because we just love that feeling of walking into a video store from the 80s and 90s. So. Our games room is definitely dedicated to capturing that period of our lives and how much we love it. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So behind the door is the Days Gone poster. This was from PAX Oz. We picked this up from the PlayStation stand and are very excited for that game. Here I have my Nintendo collectible cases. I really, really love collecting them, uh, especially any Donkey Kong ones. So yeah, they're pretty nifty. I love those. And then this is the shot of the room from the Nintendo section going through. And this is where we're going to start. Now, I have an Amiibo stand. This was actually uh, given to me from somebody that worked in a retail store. Uh, they were just going to be disposing of them. And it is two-sided, quite heavy, but it works really well for the Amiibos. Something that I'm not actively collecting for anymore, but I do love the ones that I have, and they're all like sort of the first ones that come out. So, you know, they're too deep, uh, but I definitely love the Mario ones, um, and I have all of the Legend of Zelda, and I will continue to collect those. Here is our setup for music and surround sound and stuff like that. Um, we have the Rega Planar 2 and love that uh, Sony CD player, JVC tape deck, Sony amp 
and of course my original VHS collection is down here amongst a lot of new VHS that we've been collecting over the years but uh, a lot of you may or may not know I'm a huge Disney nut and all of my Disney VHS are my originals and I absolutely love them I watch them often uh, I don't necessarily watch a lot of blu-rays if I'm feeling uh, unwell or I want to watch a VHS um, I definitely come in here and put one on we have a little bit of a vinyl collection not huge I would love to work on this uh, I definitely buy them when I find them cheap at garage sales and op shops which you guys will see from my pickups videos I do try and collect them and laser discs uh, film is another huge part of our lives we love it and we collect laser discs which is really 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 cool uh, we have a lot of Japanese ones actually and then going up here and across the top this is one of our major changes here at the moment so this shelving is from Bunnings and it has racking that runs down the wall and what that allows us to do is adjust it at any time if we need to so it gives us a little bit of flexibility with as the room grows if we buy more things and so forth you know to adjust it and fit more stuff in maybe um, but my Game Boy collection was here and it was a, on two shelves the bottom shelf happened to be Legend of Zelda but now that stuff is actually being consolidated back to uh, a, my shelf behind me which we'll end with but this is one of the changes of the games room we were sent a parcel from a good friend over in the UK and in that parcel was a lot of The Last of Us memorabilia and games, the press kit. There's also comics here. I haven't worked out how to display those yet, but I definitely am onto it. Then we've got the Uncharted press kit and Uncharted 2 press kit and other bits and pieces that uh, were kindly enough sent to us. So we wanted to dedicate a shelf just to this stuff because we just yeah, so grateful it was sent to us and yeah to have it on display and uh, there's a PUBG press kit there so that's the first section I'm going to show you and then we'll run across the top stuff here so we've got Sonic Mania I bought that from PlayAsia and I actually regret buying it because they damaged the box and didn't really care about the fact they didn't had done it my Sega Master System 1. Now this Sega Master System 1 I picked up at a uh, market uh, and this was a long time ago. This is probably around 10 plus years ago and they wanted $25 for it. I think I got, ended up paying 20, 20 to 25 for it. Got a couple of dollars off it but nothing major. But yeah, it's really, really cool. My Wii and Wii U. My minis. You guys know I love my minis. I've done loads of posts on those before. Uh, in 2018, I was lucky enough to be able to add two uh, very rare big box uh, Super Nintendo packs. They're just variants. And uh, yeah, I was really happy that I was able to add the Donkey Kong Country 2 and also Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. They're both two of my absolute favorite games on the Super Nintendo. And uh, just being able to own those was, yeah, just a huge almost like a bucket list ticked off uh, for me so yeah those videos will be on YouTube as well if you want to check them out another huge change that we made to the room was we've actually moved the PlayStation 4 consoles now as you can see they've been moved from the PlayStation 4 section over to here so we can run them sort of like in a succession together they're not in release order but they're in sort of like I don't know, colour coordinated order that we think that they look best. Uh, even though the days of play is a slightly shorter box, uh, definitely working with the colours, we wanted to go with the rarer ones in the middle, our rarer consoles. Now, it's just some, somebody asked me how we set up the room. And definitely, like, the, the items that we would like to look at the most while we're playing games and stuff, definitely take the centre stage in our room and uh, the PlayStation 4s are definitely one part of our collection that we both really enjoy and love. So 
having the 500 million and the 20th anniversary together there is yeah they look fantastic together and we were able to run them all along so there's the days of play i have an unboxing video of that on my channel the spider-man ps4 pro uh, my favorite console in the PlayStation 4 Live, like uh, out of all their releases, this one is my favorite. And uh, it's actually the one that I use in our main living room. Uncharted 4, this one is also one of my favorites, but it was given as a gift to Retro Gamer Guy. The World War II, I love that game, but I wasn't necessarily keen on the console when I first laid my eyes on it. So yeah, it's grown on me, that's Retro Gamer Guys. And then on the end is the Black Ops 3. This one's uh, definitely one of my favorites. This is the one I use for streaming um, in my stream setup office. And then the Metal Gear Solid, the Phantom Pain. Now this one was my first PlayStation 4 um, and yeah, I love it. It's such a gorgeous one, but it's been retired because I use the Black Ops one now so much. Running back across. We've got some collectibles and toys we have and our other toys that we've had from uh, ch childhood and collectibles that we've gained together over the years. Those cassettes are all mine from when I was a little kid. Uh, Voltron, Turtles, the pizza thrower <laughs> which is really cool to play with. Um, the Woody doll is a newer one. Unfortunately, I didn't grab uh, one of those when they first came out, and it's a huge regret. I, yeah, really wish I had of. Biker Mars from Mars, He-Man, Captain Planets over there as well. Small Soldiers, Sideshow Bob's one of my favourite characters from The Simpsons. Got some other collectibles there too, and Retro Gamer guys, Talk Boy from Home Alone. What a classic, what a classic. Then I'm gonna show you guys this setup. Now this is the one that I gen generally use, I would say, when I'm in the games room. And then, just turning around quickly, uh, Retro Gamer Guy would use this one over here. But, um, so we've also made some major changes here. It was a bit untidy before, let's say and we weren't happy with how the consoles were set up. So we're trying to definitely set everything up so they work to the best of their ability. So we have moved all of the Japanese consoles and we will go through what we've done with that because that's probably one of the most exciting parts of the games room tour that I'm going to unveil for you guys. Uh, but here we've got the Wii and Wii U set up and the OG Xbox. We have a PlayStation 4 Plus, which our VR, which is the original VR headset, it's not the newer version. The 60 gig PlayStation 3 from day one release, which is one that we've had. A Switch dock, my Switch is inside the house at the moment. Then the Mega CD and Mega Drive. So this is the original one, um, one of Retro Gamer Guys consoles and it's unboxed but we love it and we use it all the time. We have a PAL Sega Saturn, a PAL Dreamcast. Now they're new to our collection. Uh, if you wanna check out that video, I had a Sega haul recently. And another reason why we needed to update the games room so we could get everything to fit. A Top Loader NES and the original Sega Master System 1. So that's a loose one I have. Um, and I prefer to use that one because it's in a bit of rough condition. So, you know, it's better to use that one than my boxed one. This little small Sony TV, a uh, little bit of history about it. We found it on Gumtree for five dollars and the couple that was selling it was an older couple and they'd been using this forever and they only just upgraded their TV probably two years ago from the launch of this little TV. They were watching everything on it so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we currently run a Raspberry Pi which is down there and we have saved a lot of 80s and 90s commercials that we absolutely love and uh, we watch it on loop and it's got some Aussie commercials too so yeah we really really love that and it's one of our favorite things uh, a lot of people comment on it when they come into the room 
Now, this cabinet is a low line cabinet and it was only available on a one release run at Fantastic Furniture. I tried to get more of them because I wanted to have sort of like a beautiful uh, succession of them along this wall, but I was never able to get another one again. So everyone asks about that one. Unfortunately, it's not available anymore. Now, new addition to the room is this Sony 20 inch PVM. We didn't have PVMs in the room prior to this. Uh, we're very, very happy that we do now. Uh, this is running the PS1 and other consoles through it, which is going to be the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast and Mega Drive and Mega CD run through this as well. So yeah, it's beautiful. We're running the PS1 via S-Video at the moment and the picture, I hope the video does do it justice. Down here, we have a Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo and also a GameCube hooked up as well. They run with the Nintendo 64, so I have a PAL one on the left and the right one is a Japanese one. I use the Pikachu at the moment, but I gener generally try and rotate them around and they run through composite. All of those, we will be working out um, doing them, I think, uh, another way very, very soon. But this uh, TV is the lever and one of our favorites. I'll be doing a feature on all of our TVs and the differences between them in the foreseeable future. But yeah, I love this TV. I always play Super Nintendo on it and uh, finished a few games on here. I <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> I love it. Um, it this TV's got a lot of use from us and this has been in our games room now for quite a long time we love it now this cabinet you will see them we have actually four of these now in our games room they are $99 from fantastic furniture they work perfectly for games room that games rooms and what we need them for they've got quite a lot of compartment space on the shelf they hold quite a lot of weight as well and they've got the two drawers so we've sorted out the drawers to have the controllers for what's with sort of running off the tv above it um i think it does work quite well for us and you know it's in saying that we have bought four of them now so we obviously like those cabinets quite a lot but um yeah that's one of the great things um about fantastic furniture they seem to have white cabinets that are cheap for us and they've worked out well Next is our PSP shelf. Now, just with room constraints at the moment, uh, they are sort of all just put together on the shelf. We do like the way that they are displayed, uh, color coordinated and probably in you know our favorites, uh, but I do love the copper and I wish that that wasn't you know, on the angle that it is and stuff like that, but we will try and get another couple of shelves in here at a later stage, but we love the PSP and I haven't really covered it a lot in my other videos. So we've got quite a few variants, but mainly they are Japanese. Like this Monster Hunter one is beautiful. It's a white with blue buttons. Then the other ones are the Carnival Colors, Carnival Colors from Japan. They're beautiful. The Gran Turismo, uh, it's like a beautiful uh, black and then the the copper one on the end is beautiful too so yeah show you guys a, another shot of this from this angle okay so now we've got the big tv i always forget what this one's model number is it's the wega sony it's one of the last ones i believe that were made uh, in this style it's bloody heavy um, it's a huge TV this is the stand that it actually comes with we wouldn't have been able to um, put this TV on any other stand so I'm really happy that this actually did come with it what we have hooked up uh, on here at the moment is the PS2 now the PS2 is giving like has the best picture uh, ever on this TV the way it's set up via component 
I'm so ex I'm ecstatic at how it looks. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. We've got our laser disc player here. We've also got a Sony VHS and the Sony Beta. If you hadn't noticed, everyone, we love Sony and vintage tech. Uh, so yeah, it's obviously a huge part of Retro Gamers collection is also collecting vintage technology. Okay, big changes guys. Let's get into it. Now, as you all know from the last room tour, we had two arcade cabinets. One was the Time Crisis that was sitting here and the other one was sitting about here was our Rally X. Now we're having a lot of trouble with our arcade machines at the moment unfortunately and it's just what happens with them. They break down over time, parts break and if you fix one thing it could be another that's broken this time and unfortunately we haven't been able to fix them. So they're actually inside our house at the moment going to be repaired but what we wanted to do was showcase our Japanese collection. Now we had them all scattered over, let's call it my side of the room where I game. Uh, which is on my right at the moment and it just didn't work once we added these PAL consoles to the Japanese collection for the Sega stuff we wanted to make a dedicated Japanese area and we are so happy with how this has turned out so now we've been able to put some extra shelves in again this shelving is from Bunnings it is completely adjustable for us as we grow within this space and we've got our consoles uh, set up on this area and have some pretty awesome displays here. So the Mega Jet, the Hyper Boy, this is the Regulation 7 Dreamcast. And the PS2 there. This is the uh, Gold PS2 Virtual Boy. Neo Geo controller. We don't have any consoles to use with that yet, but it's something that we will um, get in the foreseeable future. Playdia and my Hello Kitty Dreamcast. CDs are sort of tucked away in that door frame there. And then again, the two cabinets that I was letting you guys know about just before. They work well for us. And then what we've got set up. So this is our other PVM. This is another 20 inch, but it's a widescreen one. Um, I'm hoping that it picks up properly, but we're running a lot of consoles via S-Video on this one, and they look fantastic. This running at the moment is the PCFX, which may be a console some of you may or may not know about. Doesn't have a huge library, but out of all the games that we probably can play, um, this is the only one. Um, and we happen to obviously have it, which is called Battle Heat. It's a different game, it's a fighting game. Uh, it's definitely pretty difficult for us to still play, but um, that picture is not really showing it to its full um, thing while I'm recording it, but it's absolutely beautiful, this TV, and we're so, so happy that we were able to grab it. We've also uh, hooked up here the PC Engine, a 3DO, the Hello Kitty Dreamcast, which is one of my favourites. Now, the story behind this one, I found it at a book off, just uh, in the Tokyo City actually, two stations away from Shibuya where I normally stay, and they wanted like $50 I think for it, um, because they couldn't test it. I don't know how they couldn't test it, because all the leads were in it and they had Dreamcast games on the shelf, but they didn't test it, so uh, when I ended up taking it back to the room that night, it worked perfectly. So I had that and Sega Bass Fishing for like 50 bucks, and it was good. This is the This Is Cool Sega Saturn. I love this console, it's beautiful. It's like a transparent. Um, I also have a, uh, this is loose, but I do have the box controller up the top. Then on the top of the cabinet, we've got the Virtual Boy hooked up. This is something that gives me a bit of a headache playing it, but I do love it. Um, I will finish the library of all the games for that 
uh, as well. Um, I do have a video very, very early on for my channel that uh, you guys can check out. The Panasonic Q. Now this is a GameCube. It was only sold in Japan and very, I don't want to say limited numbers, but it wasn't very popular. I think it only had a couple of years being sold and it, um, yeah, it's a Panasonic Cross Nintendo. It plays DVDs and GameCube games. Uh, another good find for us. We just need to find the original controller that comes with it because it's slightly different. Then there is the Mega CD 2 with a Mega Drive 1 on it. We love our Sega. Uh, we don't have a huge library yet for Japanese console, like sorry, this console uh, with Japanese games, but it is something that we're going to be working on. The PS1 and the Playdia. And up here we've got a little uh, Sony TV that uh, has a video 8 on the top. So that's a vintage piece that uh, Retro Gamer Guy owns. The Sony PlayStation PSX, which is the PlayStation 2. Again, Japanese only, wasn't very popular um, and <laughs> didn't sell very well, didn't have a huge run life, but um, very, very heavy uh, and hard to find a working one actually. So. This is the PlayStation 1 TV that Retro Gamer Guy owns. Uh, definitely one of his favourite pieces in the collection. We've had this one restored because it wasn't playing properly. And currently the game that's running on this is called Sexy Perubius. <laughs> and uh, it's a great game. I love this game. Uh, we always play it, we play it together, and we play it when friends come over. So yeah, definitely one of the most stressful pieces that we had delivered. Uh, to us um, Yeah, we weren't sure if it was actually going to be delivered and <laughs> and be busted up buying a TV from Japan and shipping it over can be quite stressful, but it was all good at the end of the day it did arrive safely so yeah, just Give you guys another look at the Japanese section here because we absolutely Love how this is turned out. It's just cozy uh, we sit on this little couch. This little couch is one from eBay that we grab, grab really cheap. It folds out. You can make it into a little sort of single bed if needed. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Got a little honeybee here. And some more CDs. Then going into the pinball room. I do have just some pops. No rare pops, so I'm not going to go through them. Just ones I like to collect. And we've got some frame stuff here. And then we go into our beloved our Standy and Elvira, our pinballs. We love our pinball room. Uh, for some reason, they're not very loud at the moment. Retro Gamer Guy must have turned them right down. Uh, normally, you can hear them popping and carrying on and trying to entice you to come in here and play them like pinballs do. And we absolutely love them. We come in here all the time and play pinballs and have uh, competitions. Uh, when friends come over, we definitely have competitions. But this is the Revenge from Mars. Pinball 2000. They only made two types of pinballs in this, in this way. This is this one and Star Wars one. But I like the Revenge from Mars. This is Scared Stiff featuring Elvira and definitely one of my favorite pinball machines to play of all time. Absolutely love, 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 love this. And the artwork is, yeah, perfection. Can't really see it because it's so dark in here. Next is our Turtles. It's one of the cheaper ones. Um, this one actually uh, is a Data East machine and it's, a bit rough around the edges let's just say that it's been well played it's also a really hard machine to win on um, it gets used but sometimes it has some issues so it's one of those ones that we just really take care of uh, turtles is one of our favorite things we both loved the turtles when we grew up so yeah we just love that machine now at the top here is another floating shelf this type of shelving is from IKEA and it's a picture frame one 
it works well for again what we need to use it for so we've just got some collectible toys for a turtles box these are the new release ones like the re-release they are not the originals but i had to pick them up some board games and stuff like that and genuine uh, what have we got under here there's not really anything under the pinballs except for board games and stuff so i'm not going to bore you with going through that so let's have show you guys another shot of the room now this is from the Japanese section, looking through. Now, the beige box has turned itself off. This is a Pentium 2 and Retro Gamer guys. Uh, I used to play PC games, but it's not something that I really, really am into at the moment um i know i will get into it uh given an opportunity but i just haven't had a lot of time the goosebumps books that you guys will see me pick up a lot working on that collection and other books and i'd just like to give a shout out to game on couple they were kind enough uh when they've come for a games night to actually gift us this playstation drawer ps1 drawer to hold your games like that is stunning thank you again guys we absolutely love it um yeah that's an awesome awesome thing thank you thank you thank you we love that so computer desk collectibles things that we grew up with childhood diaries from school there it's pretty funny what i used to write I, <laughs> write in them swatch watch phone this is a gift from um, our friend Tough Sig Collects. Thank you very much, mate. He sent Retro Gamer Guy Tiberian Sun. PlayStation hat. Then up the top, this is Retro Gamer Guy's sort of like little nook or corner. As I said before, he loves his vintage tech. So there's some other bits and pieces that he collects up there. There are the Nike PG2s. And then the 2.5s in the Wolf Grey and other collectibles that he loves so tamagotchi and my first sony so yeah stuff i'm not 100 percent sure of those collectibles um so i can't really go through them any good games grooms got to have a lava lamp some other collectibles and stuff that we've got over the years and letters from friends when they've sent us stuff or traded us stuff um yeah i just love being able to look at those and have a smile if I'm having a bad day reading those letters um, we love it so next the Call of Duty fridge everyone knows I love my Call of Duty and yeah this fridge is so cool I don't know if it's gonna make a sound let's see if it makes a sound it's so cool I love it I love it love it uh, Spider-Man press kit. Thank you very much, PlayStation. Okay. Now we're getting into the games part of the room, guys. So... Let's have a look. Back to the Future hoverboard. So it's Back to the Future 2. Uh, it's Retro Gamer, guys. We both love Back to the Future. In here is... Uh, this is another IKEA cabinet. Again, it's not available anymore, but it was a cabinet that we found secondhand and it works perfectly for what Retro Gamer Guy wanted to achieve, which was obviously protecting uh, his rare PlayStations, but also displaying them. So this is the 10 million Midnight Blue PS1. The video CD model, this one's white. The Net Eurose, this one's black. We've got two debug consoles. There's a blue one and a green one. And then down the very bottom is Retro Gamer Guy's very first PlayStation 1. Pretty cool, hey? So yeah. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. If you'd like to know anything more about these PS1s, please drop a comment. And uh, I have featured the midnight blue one before but i really would love to know if you guys would like to know more about these consoles and i can share more information with you and maybe do a feature of it with retro gamer guy if you guys would like to know or like to like me to do that with him 
Okay, PS1. This is the box for the 10 million edition. Um, this story behind this particular console, we were away uh, on holidays and one popped up on eBay. Uh, my husband ended up contacting the guy selling it and he lives in South Africa and he actually won this himself, uh, which is pretty crazy. And he was the one owner and uh, ended up wanting to, like, you know, being willing to sell it, sell it to uh, my husband and then also ship it from, you know, to us. It was a very stressful time because it went on a career and it seemed like it may have gotten lost at some point and he didn't want to send the box to save on freight and we were like, we don't care what the freight is. The box is the main part, so as you know, along with the console. But as it turns out, it did arrive. It's a little bit rough condition, but you know, it's one of his prize pieces. This is the box for the Net Eurose. So we had a Net Eurose which was unboxed. Uh, I on sort of sold that to a friend at cost um, because we upgraded to having a boxed version of it. And that's the black uh, PS1 I just showed you. We've got some other PS1s here, which are uh, Japanese and then the PAL version. And then more PAL versions. The monitor, uh, the Time Crisis, uh, sorry, the Namco uh, guns. But uh, that one is not the Time Crisis set. The Time Crisis set's probably behind me actually, but um, I love Point Blank and I play it all the time. Now, the games. So, this is our PS1 boxed collection. We actually stumbled across some games the other day that were loose, which is really cool. Because uh, it was some games that we'd been wanting for a long time that we didn't know we actually had. So, yeah, we were able to work out. I think there was an ESPN game that Retro Gamer Guy really wanted. Uh, the Mini. Mini's so tiny. Uh, and some of our favourite games, obviously, is Destruction Derby and Doom. I also love uh, Dave Mira BMX. That's my original game. I play that so many times. It's beautiful PS1 controllers, retro gamer guys. And then we've got more games. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is actually retro gamer guys favorite game of all time. So you guys know. Mortal Kombat 3 is probably one of mine for the PS1. Uh, this is actually a really cool game um, if anyone has thought about playing it or seen it before. It's loaded. It's a top-down shooting game and uh, it's really well done. A fantastic soundtrack as well. A lot of fun. Definitely check out that game. I highly recommend it. Going through another game, Heart of Darkness, which is there. Grand Theft Auto. Some favourites. Uh, Duke Nukem. I love Duke Nukem. Dino Crisis is one that we actually just recently added to the collection. Would you guess that we didn't have it? We only had the Japanese version, which is fine, but yeah, we wanted to grab a, um, a game lot the other day uh, for $150. We ended up picking it up and it had Resident Evil, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. Yeah, it was a pretty good deal. So some more games. Uh, the Abe's games. I love Abe's Odyssey. And there's the new two there, Resident Evil and uh, two and Resident Evil 3. We've already had directors cut for quite a long time now. Some more games. Ridge Racer Type 4. Uh, this was the other game that was in the, um, the get bulk lot that we bought the other day. Silent Hill. Now we only ever had this as a disc version. Um, super scary. This game has scared me my entire life. I don't actually think I could play it. <laughs> I don't think I could play it again. So, yeah, it's it's a scary game for me, that one. Uh, then we've got Spyro, Space Jam. Road Rash is another one of my favourite games. You'll see that there. Small Soldiers is kind of a bit of fun. Um, I love the movie more. We've got some games here. Wipeout goes without saying. That's a bit of a classic. Tony Hawk's Tomb Raider, Time Crisis. So I was actually a bit disappointed that Tomb Raider wasn't on the 
uh, PlayStation Mini, along with Crash Bandicoot. Um, go with no surprise there. I think a lot of people were were missing those games on there. Tekken is one of Retro Gamer Guy's favorite games as well. He loves Tekken 3. So, yeah, it's one of his absolute favorites. Now, we ended up uh, grabbing some uh, NTSC American games. We've had them for a while now. They sort of fell into our hands when we uh, bought one of the debugging consoles because the debug come from the company that uh, developed the game, so um, which is a pretty cool, cool story. So yeah, I think it was Playmates. There we go, Playmates. See if that works itself out. But yeah, they did Battle Arena, this game here, and the debug unit that we have actually come from from them. So that's why we've got some extra games that were developed by that crew. Here's our Japanese library. It's very, very small and it doesn't have a lot of rare games. It's just got games that we may be able to play and like to play and that we've picked up for probably a dollar a game um, in the junk bins. But we do have Silent Hill, which would be hard for us to play. But we do use um, and play Salamander. This is an absolute classic. If you have not played this shmup before, you definitely need to. Along with Sexy Parodius, which is what was playing on the console before. Then we've got Pepsi Man. This game is awesome. Awesomely hard. Very, very different. Um, you're running through the streets and yeah, Pepsi Man song gets yelled out quite a bit. One of my other favorite games, which I will be trying to stream again, is Gunner's Heaven. I love this game. It's fantastic. It's another shooting game. Um, it's released as Gunner's Heaven in Japan and then Rapid Reload in uh, European region uh, for PAL, but I don't believe this actually got a North American release, which is such a shame. It's a beautiful game. I think a lot of people would really enjoy playing that one. And I've got a Rockman game there. The Negcon controller. Seeing a lot more of these come up lately or come around or pop up on Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, a lot more people are learning about them and knowing about them. Uh, so they're used with racing games and you can sort of um, control the car by turning this. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but uh, they seem to be quite popular. <laughs> um, it's good for like Ridge Racer and stuff like that. The Pocket Station, memory cards. And then we've got other bits and pieces down here that retro gamer guy has collected he likes um, aftermarket controllers and stuff like that like this kids pad um, <laughs> there's a Mickey Mouse one somewhere I can't seem to locate the Mickey Mouse one. Oh, there it is hang on a sec so it's a bit of a unique design um, PS1 controller but yeah there's the PS1 section for you guys I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the PS1 stuff. Then at the end, we've got a glove, which is for the PS1, a boxed up carry case, which is really cool. Um, it's brand new. The Final Fantasy X2. Now, this is actually guns on a stand that come with this as well, but unfortunately, they wear wear away or wear down or something so it's not something that we're actually able to display and it's such a shame because they are stunning um there's no way of displaying it they just have just deteriorated with whatever material that they made them with our vr box and a mad cat steering wheel um my husband done a favor for someone and he was just given that because he was going to throw it away and uh yeah it's cool all right PS2 time. So one of the other things that we were finding about the room before was actually quite crammed. So all the way up the top here, the lights weren't visible. Uh, we just kept stacking and stacking and stacking and it just wasn't working anymore. No light was getting through. And one of the reasons why the Japanese section is so good is that we were able to move some of those boxes over to that side and also free up the space so it just feels more open in here now we're going through the PS2s 
Now, that one's um, got the BB unit. And it's also the transparent one as well. This one's the midnight blue. The other one on the shelf was the ocean blue. I'm sorry, I may not have mentioned that. Satin silver. It's just a standard edition. This one's a debugging console. So this one has test written on the side of the PS2. And uh, this just come in an, an ordinary shipping box with its, um, you know, DTL on there. Um, and the model number actually matches that box. So that was one of the good things. We picked that up in Japan for pretty cheap from a hard off. It was in the junk section, but it does work. Uh, the BB unit, a slim and a screen. Now this screen I ended up picking up sometime in a bulk lot set. Does work. Um, just yeah, just seems like it's an Aussie branded one that would have been sold probably at Kmart or Big W or something like that. But we definitely like that one as well. There's the Time Crisis. It's Time Crisis 2. Uh, the Logical Netplay controller and keyboard. Super weird. Retro Gamer Guy went to Japan two or three years in a row um, and they still had this in the same junk section. No one picked it up. He bought it for a dollar last year and brought it home. He was like, I can't come here anymore and not pick it up. I need to have it. So anyway, we ended up <laughs> getting it. Along with Flying Circus, this is another sort of weirder game uh, for the PS2. It's a helicopter game, um, sort of like RC Copter, and you have a different controller that comes with it, which is really cool. And Buzz and SingStar, which is fun games for us to play. Then our PS2 collection. Recently I've been working on taking off all of the sticky labels from buying them at Cash Converters. Uh, BMX Triple X, one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite games. But yeah, we were trying to um, take them all off um, and have the collection looking really clean. So as we go through, you're gonna see some that haven't been removed yet. But uh, Capcom Fighting Jam, it's one we added last year and it's a good game. Crazy Taxi is one of my favorite games, but I do prefer it on the Dreamcast. Got down to the D's. And uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Thank you very much to Luke Lax Games for sending that to us. Uh, Retro Gamer Guy must have mentioned it to him at some point and he remembered. Uh, also, my friend Too Busy Gamers sent two games to me uh, actually sent a couple of games but uh, Dark Cloud and Persona 3 I haven't started Persona 3 but I have started Dark Cloud um, it's really really good I was always intrigued by it because I always thought that was Link on the front cover um, so yeah it's very good and thank you very much mate Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Autos Final Fantasies, I have to admit I have not played these Final Fantasies I definitely need to check them out Another game that I've purchased that I haven't played yet is Fahrenheit. Now I really, really am into Quantic Dream games. Uh, I've started, I've played Heavy Rain twice, finished Detroit once, um, Beyond Two Souls. Wow, um, need to play that. That's I think their first one. Kingdom Hearts, Tomb Raider. I'm trying to get this. So you guys will be able to see what games. Some Metal Slug there. Everyone loves a bit of Metal Slug. We definitely enjoy it. Uh, Need for Speed. I love those games. I've sunk a lot of hours into them. Not just on the PS2, but also on the uh, PS3 and PS4. And PSP. I've played a lot of the PSP ones. Uh, Turok. Star Wars. Soul Calibur. Sims. Sims is not one that I really, really like, but a lot of people like Sims. I just haven't really got into it. Um, Simpsons games, of course. We love the Simpsons games. They're fantastic and fun. Seaman. Uh, those are both Japanese versions. Um, he picked them up because, uh, obviously, he just loves different Japanese things. And I think one of them comes with an ASCII controller. Um... SingStar. Another game that was um, brought to my attention 
It's run like hell. It's a survival horror, but it's like you say, you've got to run in it. Uh, definitely check this game out, everyone. I really like it and grab it while it's not so pricey. I think I paid like $15 delivered for that here in Australia as pal. I've got some other games. Time Crisis. You guys all know I love my Time Crisis. Theme Park, Transformers, uh, Virtual Cop, Worms. Love some worms. <laughs> They're so much fun, those games. Uh, X-Men and then the demos and DVDs and stuff like that collectibles other boxed items that we have up here uh, well sorry down here and then um, just like a very small PC and demo part um, this is a work in progress everyone now this is also another change I want to go over our Xbox section used to be here and about this big it was super tiny so you Xbox lovers are going to enjoy this room tour because a lot of stuff has changed, like I said. So we're going to go through all the changes. So that's the view of the PlayStation stuff. I'm coming through. The seating. This is a couch um, that I ended up buying on sale. I think it was $400 one time uh, from Freedom Furniture here in Australia. The side thing is from uh, Ikea. I don't think they make it anymore, but again, it just serves its purpose. There's magazines and stuff under there. Nothing overly exciting for you guys. Then on the end, got a poster. Thank you very much to the PSX Collector for posting that to us. Otherwise, we would have missed out on that God of War poster from EB Games. Uh, Mortal Kombat set, Far Cry 5 set, the Uncharted um, set, which we have uh, Nathan Drake unboxed um, up there on the shelf, which you would have seen at the beginning of the video. Fractured butthole. <laughs> um, Yakuza 6, love that game. If you have not played Yakuza before, please definitely check out those games. They are great. 500 million controller over here. So... Now we're going to start on the PS3 and PS4 section. And the PSP games are at the bottom. Now for space, we've just used two bean bags here. The bean bags work well because we can pick them up and move them wherever we want. Um, and they're, you know, bean bags are pretty comfortable. Across the top, we have the sound bar for the PS3 was that something <laughs> scared me in the room i'm not editing that out um here is the sound bar here it's pretty cool retro gamer guy definitely uh wanted to get this when we were in japan um and yeah we um sorry i just got it. so yeah he ended up finding this box but he had to bend it to fit it in our luggage bag to get it home but I'm glad he ended up picking it up. Um, there is also a TV that we will add at a later stage, but we haven't been able to have space or organize getting one and stuff like that, but that'll happen in the future. Then we've got the PS3, 60 gig, a Japanese version of the PS3. It's an 80 gig with the um, uh, sack man on the front, which is cool, sack boy, I should say. Uh, then the red PS3, one of the harder ones, I think, still to get here in Australia. The blue. Then we've got the PS4 Pro box, the min, uh, sorry, 500 million controller and headset. They're both boxed and sealed. Um, we have the extra controller, which um, I'm using currently. So one of those boxes is loose, but I think this one is the sealed one and then that one's sealed as well. And going through our PS3 collection. Thank you very much to Lishi for that set. Uh, one of my recent edition games was Alice Madness Returns. Please let me know if you've played this game. I really have wanted it and wanted it and wanted it. So um, I haven't had an opportunity yet to play it, but I really want to play it. So let me know if you've played it before. All of the Call of Duties. 
since Call of Duty 3 on the PS3 um, and two copies of them. Uh, you'll probably go, why do you have two copies? Well, <laughs> um, we both enjoy playing together um, on Call of Duty. So this is Retro Gamer Guys section, which we'll go through in a moment. And then obviously over here is my section. So I have my um, PS3 hooked up and PS4. So we can be in the same room and play uh, Call of Duty together. And we've actually done that uh, since the beginning of the PS3. Um, yeah, and we, and we bought Call of Duty 3. Um, so yeah, that's a really important thing to us. We just love it. Um, it's one of those games that we just really enjoy playing um, together online and you just have fun and have a laugh and enjoy gaming and I think that's what it comes down to sometimes is just making sure you enjoy playing games. And we've got some games along here. Dark Souls is something that I haven't, a game that I haven't played yet. Uh, I've heard it's really hard so let me know. Uh, the Gran Turismo is God of War, Heavy Rain, I was just talking about that before, Leisure Suit, Leisure Suit Larry, it always gets me, don't know why I tried to say that then, uh, some charging docks, Lollipop Chainsaw over there, if you haven't checked that game out, please do, it is fantastic, we love it, another game that we just added was the Midway, uh, Naughty Bear, I, it's hard, but just the controls, the way it's sort of the game runs, but yeah, it's still pretty cute and funny. Uh, Saints Row is a game set that I haven't played yet, but I do want to. That's some Tom Clancy's there. Time Crisis 4, love that. We've got the box set in both PAL and uh, the Japanese one. And then we've also got some games here, also sent to us from Friend, which was awesome, some sealed games are there on display and watchdogs I'm really not into that game but I don't know what I'm doing wrong I don't know I should be into it uh, but I, yeah just haven't been able to I've tried with both watchdogs 1 and 2 and I can't get into it time crisis 4 sets like I said um, the Japanese and also the power release uh, in our collection PlayStation move and also our other attachment move guns, PS4, controllers. And then going down the bottom to our PSP collection. It is getting there. We've now completely filled up this one row. Um, Death Junior is great. Another good game. There's a second one of that. Um, what else do I really like playing? Um, I absolutely love the Need for Speed, yeah. Underground Rivals, Shift, um, Pro Street, Pursuit Force, I do enjoy that a little bit on the um, good old PSP. And also watching UMD movies, and I collect UMD movies. We don't have a lot of them, but what we do have, um, you know, Fifth Element, Hellboy, Mummy Returns, The Punisher, Snatch, Speed, Starship Troopers, Top Gun is a recent addition. So yeah, we definitely enjoy collecting for the PSP as well. Now our PS4 collection is not huge in any way, shape or form compared to what a lot of people's collections are. Um, games that I absolutely think that you should play is a way out this is a fantastic title um i don't i yeah I, I can't speak highly enough about it so definitely check that out obviously call of duties <laughs> um which would come as no surprise detroit become human is a fantastic game from last year definitely check that game out guys retro gamer guys 20th anniversary headset and controller they're both sealed Behind that, I'm not sure what's tucked away there. Oh, there we go, another camo. My Duke Nukem figurine. I picked this up in Japan, uh, one of our first trips, so it would have been 2012, and I paid 50 cents for him, <laughs> and I love him. He's always been on display ever since. Then God of War controller and the Gran Turismo. Uh, other games. Of course, God of War. It's one of my favorite games of all time now. Definitely check that out if you have some spare time too. 
Um, Last of Us Remastered, I've played through this. Uh, this one also come with the DLC Left Behind. Um, fantastic. Need for Speed, I need to finish that version of it. Uh, the Persona, the dancing games, they're so much fun. Uh, Uncharted Collection and Uncharted 4, wow. Beautiful games, please play them. Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil. And the Tomb Raiders have been really good on the PS4. Uh, also, some more controllers. It's the clear blue, um, the berry, the midnight blue, the blue camo. So as if you didn't see or you didn't know, <laughs> we've got a bit of a blue thing going on there. Uh, we love them. And the PS Vita. We don't have a huge library there. I hope you guys can read that. Um, it's not mine. It's Retro Gamer Guys. I need to definitely play some more PS Vita. But yeah, that's the... That section for you guys to have a look at. Now, Retro Gamer Guys gaming section. Again, we have the fantastic furniture um, cabinet. It works well in space. It's actually about 1200 um, long. So yeah, it's, it works well. Um, set up with this uh, screen, which is the Sony, uh, are the minis. Now currently I've only got the uh, NES and the Super Nintendo and also the Commodore 64 set up at the moment. We have the PlayStation 3 set up, the World War II um, limited edition PS4 and also the PS Classic is set up and we run all of them through the TV and I think that's enough consoles in this area. This one's just like our extra cable drawer and that one's our extra controller drawer. But I, I am really happy how this looks in this section and it is quite cozy sitting here with the nice rug and your bean bag. It's yeah, it's really lovely to play games in this section. Now, for Sega. Recently we picked up a large Sega set. That video is available on my channel as well, if you want to check it out. And in that video, I ended up adding a few consoles that we didn't currently have in the PAL format. One of which was this Mega CD2, absolutely mint condition. We didn't have a 32X, we didn't have a PAL, Sega Saturn or Dreamcast. And these all come from one owner. That video is pretty detailed. Um, I'd love for you to check it out. Uh, but yeah, obviously one of the main things with working out how this room was going to be displayed was obviously to fit all of this in. That was a bit of a stress so, um, on us because we were running out of room and we weren't sure how we were going to fit it in, but I'm really happy with the time and patience, making sure the boxes were displayed perfectly and they literally have all fit in along here. Snug as a, <laughs> so just snug and perfect. And uh, the only thing is I had to move the original master system over to this side, but I think it works well because it's still front and center uh, and it's with the Sonic Mania set. But this is the Sega stuff. Now, some of the Sega games, uh, you guys will know that this is one of our favorite, um, well, for myself more personally, one of my favorite consoles to collect for. And I've also had a lot of these games from when I was a kid, um, or I bought them when I got my first job. Uh, now, the Sega Master System 2 that is boxed in here, that particular one is my original console and it's not working properly. I left it in storage and um, I just stopped working one day, unfortunately. Now, when I was a kid, I threw away boxes. So I bought this box from, I think, the UK with another console in it. And um, yeah, like I just, I'm, I, I like to retire my consoles and that is one really important piece to me, that console inside there um, was my first Sigma Master System and very, very dear to me. Uh, then all of the games running through. I've got some uh, absolute favorites, um, Castle of Illusion, love this game, played it so much as a kid, uh, Choplifter is also one of my favorites, 
we've got deep duck trouble i only bought that uh you know within the last recent few years but i used to rent it all the time along with desert speed trap i used to rent this it's it's bloody hard this game but uh yeah really enjoy it still though um i love it and uh fantasy zone uh some of my favorite games land of illusion uh lemmings crusty's funhouse sort of like a puzzle game but i really do enjoy that one too uh psycho fox and of course penguin land i love this game i used to rent it all the time uh, this is one of the games that we've probably bought when I first uh, was in a relationship with my now husband. And uh, yeah, just one of the first things that we would have added collectively together. And yeah, it's a very important game to me as well. Then um, probably Streets of Rage is another good one. Love that game. Over here we've got a very small Game Gear collection, but I don't have a working Game Gear. I wish I could show you guys that, but unfortunately I don't have a working one. The Mega Drive game. So uh, when we added that collection the other day to, um, to the room, uh, we ended up picking up some extra games. So Altered Beast is sitting there at the moment, just in case we end up putting it into this box set. Um, I think I may do that because that's my Altered Beast there. Uh, and then the Mega Drive is a console that I actually purchased myself when I was a teenager with my first um, lot of pay. I went to a cash converters at a store at a suburb called Coolangatta. I walked in, they had a pretty rough looking Mega Drive and I paid not much for it. Five bucks, 15 bucks, something like that rings a bell. And then over the years, I've just been adding Mega Drive games as I can buy them for less than a dollar or less than $2, um, with the exception of the recent haul. Um, you know, obviously those games would have on average worked out at probably about $10 or $11 a piece, I think. Uh, but some awesome games that I've recently just added is Ghouls and Ghosts. Um, I also have that in the Japanese version, which I haven't opened yet. And Mutant Football League is one I used to rent. I used to rent this exact copy of it. When it became available for sale, I bought it. And it's just some really, really cool games. And then recently I just added um, Super Thunderblade to the collection. I got that for $12 um, about two weeks ago, which is in a pickups video. And Super Hang On. So a pretty, I'll try and get it in one handed. Uh, then the Wonder Boy games are also fantastic on the Mega Drive. And one game that we added in this whole lot was Thunder Force 3 and I'm in love with this game. I think it's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out Thunder Force 3. I have to put that up there for now. So yeah, then going down to the next section just some cartridges for the Mega Drive. Uh, they're all ones that I've picked up uh, loose over the years, um, either in bulk lots that I've bought of gaming sets or ones that I've bought from cash converters myself. This is a Genesis case. Um, this is the first one I've ever seen, but I've actually got a second one at the moment. Uh, not on display, I'm just trying to work out whether or not I put these cartridges in it. Um, currently in here is some Sega Master System cartridges, which I actually haven't looked at for some time. I don't know what games are in there. Uh, then the Dreamcast stuff. Demolition Man on the Mega Drive. Then um, our Mega Drive, uh, sorry, Mega CD games. Uh, this is more Retro Gamer Guys collection when it comes to the Mega CD. He loves it. Um, we're slowly working through trying to get a bigger um, collection for it. Um, then these are the recent Sega Saturn games that we've added. And I definitely am looking forward to finding some time to like to play this game and also finish it. I've heard so many fantastic things about Nights into Dreams, so I have to play that. Uh, Japanese games, uh, mainly puzzle, Capcom, or um, fighting. 
Oh, that one's uh, Twin B. Oh, is it? Yeah. So then we've got it's Rockman X3. Also, when we added the PAL set, we grabbed some games uh, from the guy as well, and that sort of kick-started the collection. Now, I always, I did have a um, Dreamcast previously, um, a PAL one, but I kept having issues with it, and so I ended up just returning it, and it was a big regret for me. Um, so that's why the other day when I was talking to the gentleman about that Dreamcast, I was like, I didn't want to leave it there because I wanted to walk home with it, <laughs> and... Um, yeah, get those games as well, so very, very happy. We've got some gaming soundtracks there, which is really cool. And a kooky part of the collection, or weird thing, is Retro Gamer Guy tried to find this around the world. It's the only one he found for me. Um, it's actually the soundtrack for Call of Duty 3. Um, I listened to this quite a bit. Uh, it's awesome, and I can't believe he was so thoughtful and did that for me. It was a really awesome gift but something probably a bit weird for everyone else to think of how much I love Call of Duty 3 but I genuinely love Call of Duty 3 a lot um, so yeah it's one of my favorites then we've got the collectibles from um, all different bits and pieces that's from Loot Crate uh, then controller this is the um, 3d control pad that come with uh, Nights into Dreams uh, this pal Game gear. Game gear that's in there does not work, everyone, so I'm sorry. Virtual stick that came from Japan. Uh, the converter. Also, then we've got some cue cards for the PC Engine. So we've mainly just got shmups here um, because they're easy for us to play. This is a cameraman, virtual cameraman game. Uh, a little bit raunchy. But one of the other changes to the room, everyone, is I've made a dedicated Xbox section. Now I know it's only small at the moment, but I am working on the library and I listen to everybody and I'm trying so hard to add exclusives and fun games that I like. So I really hope everyone enjoys that I've got a proper Xbox section now and I am working on that collection. So we've got Halo, Need for Speed Underground 2, because obviously, as you know, I like that game. Uh, Oddworld, Monsters Odyssey, I gotta take that sticker off. Uh, Predator, Concrete Jungle, Toe Jam and Earl, Turok, Voodoo Vince, uh, then we've got the Banjo-Kazooie and Catherine, I, that was recently um, a new game that I really want to play, brought to my attention, another Atlas game, Fable, Gears of War, I played the first one, I loved it, we're going to play the other ones on stream, Perfect Dark and then the Xbox One games over here, not a lot at the moment but I am working on it everybody, so uh, yes! Xbox rules. Other collectibles? We've got the um, Super Nintendo controller. Now this is where s sort of running out of space um, isn't ideal. I do have Nintendo stuff here as well. Um, but overall I do enjoy the way that this all displays color wise. And part of Collecting I think is also having your favorite pieces where you're going to sit or see or whatever so When I sit down in this section, which I do and play um, games, I can look at all of my um, Legend of Zelda collectibles uh, And these figurines so these particular ones are mine from when I was a teen or a kid I uh, bought them I unboxed them and I lost pieces over the years so a few years back I found somebody that was selling them, but they had opened them. So they're actually non-attached to the back of the card, but everything is in mint condition. So I had to have them. So I've got my original ones and then these ones because Ocarina of Time is one of the best games ever. And then I'm also sort of running out of space with my Amiibos and these are all from Breath of the Wild. I'm just working on the space issue for that. So yeah, but they are beautiful, beautiful amiibos so we'll have another look from this side you guys and then on the end we've got the breath of the wild shield backpack and then my shrine to link I absolutely love Legend of Zelda 
and the games. Uh, I love Link as a character. It's one of my favorite heroes. I've got figurines, which I would love to unbox, but I can't bring myself to do. And the limited edition set for Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch. Then on either side of it, I do have Amiibos. Again, I'm not really happy with how they're displaying at the moment. Um, the cards look like they are actually getting a little bit warped or bent from the angle, uh, but it's something I'm going to definitely work on very, very soon. So let's have a look at the Nintendo section. Okay, now, as I was saying before, when it comes to some consoles that are really important to me, I do retire them. Just so the longevity of the console, I'll have that particular original one for the rest of my life. Now, I remember receiving this box set as a kid, um, but again, I threw away the box, silly me, and yeah, anyway, I ended up tracking one of these down in very good condition for, for its age, and uh, I took the guts out <laughs> and uh, replaced it with all of my stuff. So the game is in there, my controllers, my Super Nintendo, and I'm retiring that now. So it's just a shame I don't have my original box, but I, I still have my original console and now I've boxed it back up again. And yeah, love the fact that I've been able to sort of preserve my console like that because the Super Nintendo is definitely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite consoles of all time. And uh, I just love it. So yeah, that and uh, I love all games, but I really do love the Super Nintendo. Um, and yeah, that's one of the my favorite pieces in the collection now. Got the Super Famicom Junior. That's a Japanese version. Super Famicom console, which is actually out and being used. It's pretty rough. The console's yellowed as well, but. It pays to just try and test stuff. I bought that for like five bucks in the junk section and it's worked perfectly. The Twin Famicom, it's one I haven't pulled out of the box yet to use. Um, the control, Actually, I have pulled it out, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, it looks like it's had a repair. It's not fantastic, so I need to work on getting another one of those. It actually comes in two uh, bo different boxes. Uh, this one's the yellow box one, uh, but I also believe um, it has a black box version. PAX uh, Power Glove, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the action set, the control deck. I actually bought this um, from Akashi's for $10. It was behind the counter and it was untested. And I said, oh, don't worry, mate, I'll be able to fix it. And this is a long time ago. And he goes, oh, no, I can't really sell it. It's not meant to be out yet. I said, oh, how about I chuck you a tenner? You can go and have lunch somewhere. So yeah, luckily I gave him 10 bucks and I walked out with that as well as uh, my laser disc player of all things. Uh, the family disc system, some of the, the Famicom stuff and that's actually the uh, Famicom gun attachment. So even though we got this yellow, uh, sorry, the orange one and the gray one, um, J Japanese got this. So yeah, it's really, really cool that one. Now we're gonna go through all of the Nintendo games. So here we go. Got some of my absolute favorites uh, and I've been collecting the NES for a long time. I haven't actively added a lot of games to this collection. Um, NES is very expensive here in Australia. I would love to add more, but I've just pretty much got my favorite games here. Uh, Battletoads, Excited Bike, Flintstones, Gauntlet uh, 2. Uh, Kung Fu, uh, definitely one of my favorites, Super Mario Brothers, um, and yeah, Legend of Zelda. So they're some of my favorite games. And I have loose games. Um, I do like the Bart games on the NES. A lot of people don't like them, but I particularly do like them. Um, and then just other carts that I've added. Uh, this is my original Legend of Zelda, but I've had other ones that were boxed over the years. This one I actually bought from the UK just recently, um, probably in a couple of years ago. So yeah, I, but I normally would just play my own one. We've got the Famicom games. Don't have a lot. Um, I have more cartridges. So I ha this one is full. This is all these cartridge colors here. They're the Mega Man games. Um, and then down here, which we'll go through shortly, 
um, in that Sony cassette box is actually more cartridges. So I would like to work on more boxed Famicom games, but again, uh, it comes down to how much you're willing to pay and what you can come across at the time. Uh, but yeah, I definitely love the way that they look and they're so compact compared to Australia. They're fantastic. Then we have the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom. I generally have Capcom or Konami on display for the Super Famicom. Uh, like the box art, like the games, it uh, just seems to be something that I tend to do. Uh, so I've got Rockman and Bass, or Rockman and Fort, um, Nakamura, Parodius and Mickey Mania. The other Mickey games and Final Fight, also good games. And we've got um, my very small library of Virtual Boy games, but yeah, again, it's only a small library to begin with, but I'm going to try and finish that one off. Then my Super Nintendo collection. A lot of these are my originals. I didn't throw my original games out um, or pass them on to other people when I was a kid. Luckily, um, Donkey Kong 2 and 3, I only had the cartridge for Donkey Kong Country, but I ended up buying this beautiful box set a few years ago, but these ones are mine, Bubsy, um, any of the X rental cases, I used to rent those games um, from Blockbuster, and I ended up buying all of them um, when they were running them out, and uh, yeah, like obviously Super Mario. Yoshi's Island is one of my favorite games of all time uh, and along with the Lion King, Mega Man X and uh, Zelda, Goof Troops are good, good fun as well um, and I have to admit I haven't finished or played too much of Castlevania but I definitely need to do that in my lifetime. Then I have some Super Famicom games. These games actually aren't all fantastic titles or games that I can play uh, but we've got Bomberman there. And I have the Japanese versions of Donkey Kong and Super Mario Brothers and uh, Legend of Zelda. I ha also have the Japanese versions of the Mega Man X games. So they're called Rockman and I prefer the Japanese versions. So I actually have the full set now. Um, I have X2, X2, X3, 7, Soccer and uh, Rockman Fort. So very happy about that. That was one collection I was glad to have finished got the Nintendo 64 now beautiful console and my Japanese games so some of them I don't play um, because I can't but um, there's Super Smash Brothers uh, Pokemon uh, also uh, the Mario parties I wish I could play those properly but it sometimes it just comes down to guessing when we do it can be a bit of fun then my uh, pal games now a lot of these games I actually threw the boxes away so currently I've been trying to search for boxes or get boxes from people that say they've got boxes left over. So you'll notice that I've got quite a lot of Nintendo 64 cartridges and I also have a game tower which I'll show you shortly and that has a lot of games in it as well. Um, I don't know what it was about me throwing boxes out but I definitely shouldn't have when I was a kid. All I kept was my original Ocarina of Time and Pokemon Snap from memory. They're the only two I kept the boxes for because um, they are two of my absolute favorite favorite games. And I'm gonna stream playing Pokemon Snap very, very soon because uh, that is a very good game and I wish that they would re-release it. Uh, and then there's more, uh, N64. Then the GameCube. Now the GameCube was a console that I didn't grow up with. I only added one uh, probably five to seven years ago I don't know something like that um, and yeah I, I need to play it more um, if you've got some games that you think I should play that you see that I that I own I'm not going to go out and buy more games but um, I definitely like to know which ones I should start with playing first my small Japanese version uh, versions of the games then we've got the Wii I buy a lot of Wii games because they are cheap at the moment here in Australia and I think if you would like to start collecting, buy what's cheap if you want to just bulk up your collection. Uh, I do try and just keep the games that I think will be good. I don't just go and buy all sport ones or something like that. But 
Um, yeah, I found a lot of these games for under two dollars, and I think there's nothing wrong with uh, buying games that you might eventually get around to playing, which I'm hoping I can. And I really enjoy the Nintendo Wii. I think it's a cool little console, and I've always liked playing it. And I love the Wii U as well. So now we're down to the Switch section. Um, my library for Switch, I think I've just got under 10 games actually. So I've got um, Super Mario Odyssey, the Sega Mega Drive Collection, Mega Man um, games which were sent over from Canada for me, for my friend. Axiom Verge which came at a recommendation from somebody on Instagram, I haven't played it yet. Uh, Wild Guns, uh, thank you very much to my friend Cam for sending over the Mega Man 11 which I've almost finished, it's a great game. Um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate with the controller. It was really, really kind of you to send that over to me. That video is also on YouTube. Then we've got the Wii U. Uh, look, everyone, I love the Wii U. I use it all the time when I come in the room if I just want to play uh, Mario. One of my favorite Mario games is um, the Super Mario 3D. This is a great game. I love it. And... I play a lot. <laughs> I won't lie, I play that a lot when I come in here and uh, enjoy it. So, yeah, the Wii U is a great console. And I've collected a lot of games on it that I like to play. Um, I haven't been bulk buying anything for that, but I will now that it's going to probably come down in price. Uh, just so I have a bigger collection of it. But yeah, definitely love the Wii U. Then we've got the end. Uh, now, sadly, I did have a red neon sign that was Nintendo. I am going to replace it at some stage. I just haven't replaced it yet. It started, I don't know, making a sound and then a smell. So it ended up being thrown out. Um, I just couldn't risk a fire in here. It wasn't worth the stress of knowing that maybe it could spark. And then, you know, a lot of this stuff is paper and cardboard. You know, it's not worth the risk. So if you have anything that's questionable in your room or house, please just make sure you discard it. Um, but I have these collectors, well, sorry, they're not collectors boxes, they're marketing boxes or promo boxes from um, stores. And I just had 10, I used to get them. I don't get them um, very much anymore, but anything that's Yoshi or Le Legend of Zelda related, I'm definitely always gonna make sure I get them because uh, I love them, those games so much. Then these cool Amiibos, the Metroid ones, they're beautiful. Uh, also uh, grabbed the Banjo-Kazooie and uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day Takako, Taka, to, oh, Taka, I can't say it. I can't say it right now. <laughs> um, and then uh, any sort of pins and collectibles there. And then some loose cartridges for the Super Nintendo. And then this side is actually the Super Famicom. And one game I would love to add this year is Turtles in Time on the Super Famicom. I'm going to do that. That's going to be one of my games this year. But this is a Sony cassette draw. And as I said, I've got quite a few cartridges for the Famicom in there. Then down the bottom of this little cube, I have my guidebooks. This one, this shelf is pretty much just dedicated to Zelda. This one's a combination of sort of a lot of different ones um, in here and different books over here um, it's really hard to see I need to get some um, strip lighting for this corner of the room as well which I will do um, but there's Care Bears VHS in there and the Buffy the Vampire Sel uh, Slayer set which is came out for the 20th anniversary um, up here is another Zelda shrine of collectibles that I've um, amassed over the years um, and I love all that stuff and then from here we've almost at the at the end of the wall so we've got more collectibles and handhelds and stuff like that now one of the other changes to the room as I was saying um, I did have my Game Boy stuff up on that shelf but I didn't have much room and I compressed everything on this Game Boy shelf to being uh, back on this one section of area and I'm happy that I did it because I do actually think it looks much more impressive and organized in this way. Um, I try to color coordinate any games uh, that I have 
um, across any of the areas in the room to make it more um, have more impact I just think it looks much better if it's um, for myself uh, and my taste personally so uh, that's why everything's sort of more color coordinated not in um, the order of preference of what came out but it is to an extent like that because I go from the original Game Boy through to other handhelds sort of the progression of it as you go through so we'll go through that now but we've got the original Game Boys here Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Light, which is an amazing piece that I love. And then the Game Boy Colors. So here I've got the Pokemon Center one, the Justco one, some just some standard edition. This one's the um, Australian release in the teal. I love that color. And then here are three of my favorite uh, ones. So this is the Lawson's Game Boy Color on the left, the Giants. Game Boy Advance there from uh, Japan so those ones are Japanese release only along with the Mega Man Game Boy Advance uh, that's one that I don't necessarily take out and I don't use because I just want it I don't want to break it or scratch it uh, it's two-tone um, different colors on the front and the back and it's beautiful it's such a beautiful beautiful handheld more Game Boy Advance I love that handheld um, DS lights and I really uh, love this one. Um, this is the two-tone with like a crimson, red, and black underneath. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous handheld. Um, down here, I've got some Game Boy Pockets. Ones again that I grabbed from Japan when they were exceptionally cheap. Um, the Game Boy, Super Game Boy controller, that was, it's brand new and sealed from um, its new old stock. I bought that at a store called Friends in um, Akihabara. Then the DSLL, DSi, also the Game Boy Advance Famicom Color, Game Boy Micro, the 3DS in the 30th anniversary, which is beautiful. Um, my friend Jody sent me this beautiful Pokemon 3DS XL, uh, the Metroid one, and then the Super Nintendo one is just here. Got some the Pikachu, the Yoshi one. Uh, Mario Kart, Neo Geo, uh, Pocket. Unfortunately, I don't have any games for that, um, sadly. And then we've got the loose handhelds. So here, these are the handhelds that I generally, like, pretty much, I use these most of the time um, because they are loose. And one really cool piece of the collection is this one right here, the DMG. This is Retro Gamer Guy's original DMG Game Boy and yeah like he still has that and I've asked her if I can restore it for him and he doesn't want me to he wants it in his original condition so sometimes when I play that one it's a bit of a pain because the screen's a bit hard to see but I have to um, listen to his wishes then over here I have the Game Boy games that I've done the cases for I've still got this long list of carts to do I haven't had time but yeah, this is really, really cool. Um, I did a post on Instagram about those and they turned out really well. So they're just cassette cases with a custom print um, done of the artwork. And then on the back, I've got the game cut inside. Uh, my Legend of Zelda handhelds is another important aspect of my collection. I absolutely love them. Uh, just one of my favorite things to collect. Um, Zelda items just in general but yeah just love them um, important to note about this this one here it was also released in Japan but the box art slightly different it stands up and instead of having a link between worlds installed it has Ocarina of Time so technically I do need to get both uh, but I'll hopefully be able to pick up the other version when I go to Japan next then the 3DS and the handhelds and then back down here, we've got some boxed Game Boy games. Now, when I was a kid, I had some Game Boy games. And uh, over the probably two and a half years, I've been trying to re-buy all of the box games that I had as a kid uh, because I got rid of them. Uh, the only one I wasn't able to get the PAL version of was um, Bart and the Beanstalk. It's a very expensive game now, um, but I did have that boxed and mint. Um, but I don't know. I ended up 
selling them <laughs> to cash converters one time anyway. Uh, but that's just the story sometimes when you have to do things um, and I shouldn't have done it, but I really regret it. But anyway, let me know if you've sold any of your games and regret it. Uh, but then I have all these other Japanese games that I've been picking up when I go there. Uh, mainly all puzzle or fun games as Turtles there, Warrior Land, um, love them. Then the Game Boy Advance games. Again, so good. The Japanese versions are fantastic. I love these compact little boxes that come in um, with fantastic artwork. And I uh, really enjoy collecting for those. So yeah, I'm going to be collecting those for a lot longer and hopefully have a much bigger library very soon. Some other games. They're all not really ones to write home about, but um, Super Mario Yoshi's Island 2. Generally, if I love a game, I will collect multiple versions of the game. So I'll buy the Japanese version, I'll buy the PAL version. If it's re-released, I'll buy it. If it's re-released as an online digital copy for your Switch or whatever, <laughs> or your 3DS, I buy it. Um, I can't help it. I buy all the different versions. Then DS. I don't have a lot of rare or expensive games on the DS. Um, but I have some games, um, but I know some people that really um, like Animal Crossing as an example and stuff like that. And because I'm not going to play them, I'll probably on gift them to people, um, just pay it forward. Uh, but I do really like this Super Princess Peach. My version's a little bit faded on the cover, but I love that game. I have it on uh, Japanese version as well. Uh, and then my 3DS collection is not huge. But I haven't been adding more games until I finish a few off and I'm spending a lot of time doing that. I play certain games a couple of levels every night before I go to bed and I'm slowly chipping away at them. My collector's editions on the 3DS. Majora's Mask is one of the favourite collector's editions that I have. The Hyrule Warriors I don't really like and then the Atari Lynx which is working. It's a great little uh, handheld there. And then we've just got the N64 to go. Uh, across the top is picture frame shelving again from Ikea and it sets the purpose and works well with the N64 controllers. They are just the Japanese ones across the top with the exception of the Extreme Green which only came out in the USA um, but that is a, a controller that I had to have because it's fluoro and very 90s <laughs> um, but yeah it was it's a beautiful controller but all the other boxed ones are Japanese I don't have the full set uh, I love them probably one of my most expensive well, my most expensive two of those, which is the clear black and the Diehawks, but uh, I'll eventually get the other ones, but I'm patient. I think another thing to remember about collecting is be as patient as you can be. Something will always pop up and it will pop up at the price that you're either willing to pay or can afford to pay. Um, my consoles and um, controllers have not cost me that much because I've just waited to chip away at them. Uh, so to finish things off uh, Here is the Japanese Nintendo 64 complete collection Now uh, these Consoles are uh, worked on for a couple of years to be able to complete the collection. I actually started with um, From memory it was the red white that started it and then once I got the red white, I think I got the blue white and then I picked the clear black up for like $40 from a super potato in uh, Osaka in Den Den Town in 2013 um, and then the rest became history um, I added the uh, rest of them to the collection over the years um, and absolutely love collecting for the Nintendo 64 and learning about new games and games that I should be playing uh, and finishing off the Nintendo 64. I'm never going to finish off the library, but just finishing off the Japanese set would be amazing. So the controllers is obviously the next thing I need to do. Uh, the only, there's the two Pikachu versions. 
uh, orange and the blue. The blue is probably my favorite. Then the Donkey Kong, this is the USA version. Donkey Kong set, I love this. Oh, the box art is phenomenal. Now I don't want any of the other fanta uh, fantastic colors, but I have the uh, the clear black PAL version. Um, I don't want to get all the other ones because I just simply wouldn't have enough room for them, but um, I'm happy that I have the Japanese collection. It's the one that I wanted to complete the most. And uh, yeah, very happy that I have them. Uh, the GameCube, this is a PAL one. Um, it's one of the first ones uh, we when we expanded our games room in our old home that we grabbed um, and started adding a GameCube collection. Spicy Orange is one that I only recently added. Uh, then the Hanshin and Tigers um, was one that I had my... I just needed to have it. It's beautiful. Um, I definitely will be playing more GameCube. Um, this one I don't use, uh, but I'll be using my Panasonic Q. Uh, but yeah, definitely, if there's any other GameCube games, especially if they're just released in Japan that I can play, let me know in the comment section because I'm definitely going to track them down. Then the Silver... Uh, it's a Japanese one as well with the Game Boy Player in it. But yeah, there's uh, all of the Nintendo section. And uh, just in this box is the J-League prize giveaway um, console. And this one happens to be the ANA giveaway one. But yeah, I'll give you guys another look at the Nintendo section. And another overall look of the room. I hope you've been enjoying going through all of the games room uh, with me. <sighs> that was a bit of a long one, wasn't it, guys? Uh, thank you so much for watching 2019's Game Room Tour. Uh, I really wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone that watches all of my YouTube videos and supports my channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and reaching out via YouTube and Instagram to me. I'd also like to finish this video with saying a huge thank you to a lot of the people in the community that I really admire and look up to, and also that have been a huge support for me. So, uh, Too Busy Gamers, Gundam Ross Gaming, PSX Collector, The Last Gamer. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Gebs24 and CJR. I love those guys. I love everyone and their YouTube channels. They uh, give so much to the gaming community. I also would like to thank some Instagrammers. Uh, so I have Intrepid Class Gaming uh, and also Wayne's Games or Wayne Gamesayer now. Uh, his account just recently changed. Real Dave Brown, Gary Clark, Tough Sid Collects and many, many others that are huge, huge supporters of me and talk to me uh, almost every day on Instagram. Uh, thank you so very much for always supporting me and uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed this room tour. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.